William Shakespeare is so ingrained in popular culture that it might surprise some to learn that the Bard might not have actually penned his most famous works. On the 400th anniversary of his birth, we look at the theories behind this and find out who the man behind the curtain really was. An upstart crow or massive fraud? No legacy is so rich as honesty, but the most controversial theory about Shakespeare comes from claims that he didn't actually write any of his work. Here are four men who have said to have written in his place. Lawyer, philosopher, essayist and scientist, parallels between Sir Francis Bacon's work and Shakespeare's have led some to argue that he had messages of support for a Republican society in plays co-authored with Shakespeare. The 17th Earl of Oxford, Edward de Vere, sponsored several companies of actors and was an important courtier poet. It's thought that only a man with knowledge of royal courts, Italy and law could have written plays as well informed as Shakespeare's, a man just like de Vere. Perhaps the most outlandish theory is that Christopher Marlowe's death was faked to allow him to escape prosecution for atheism. Shakespeare was then chosen as a front behind whom Marlowe could continue writing his successful plays. With the same initials as the Bard, William Stanley was reported by a spy to have been busy in penning comedies for the common players. He was also known to have travelled to Navarre, where Love's Labour's Lost is set, and his older brother was Lord Strange of Lord Strange's Men. There are two periods in Shakespeare's life where we cannot account for what the Bard did or where he was. These periods stretch from him leaving school up until his marriage to Anne Hathaway in 1578-82, and the birth of his children up into his first performance of Henry VI in 1585-92. These holes in our knowledge have been filled with all manner of theories ranging from him becoming a poacher, a servant, schoolmaster, a pilgrim or a soldier. The last two could explain the detailed scenes of military life in his plays and why 14 of them are set in Italy, where the heart of the Catholic faith lies. The Sweet Swan of Avon's Real Face Despite being fond of summer days, Shakespeare has left us little with which we can compare his likeness to, since he never commissioned a portrait of himself and there are no physical descriptions of what he looked like. This means we must rely on images made by others, with four main portraits existing. The Sanders portrait has a label identifying it as Shakespeare and was stated that it was painted in 1603. New scientific tests on the label and the oak panel suggest that it dates to this time, which if true, would make this likely to be an authentic depiction. Martin Drauscher engraved this portrait of Shakespeare for the title page of the first folio, a collection of the Bard's plays published in 1623. It is the only work of art beside his funerary bust that is definitely identifiable as a depiction of him. The Chandos portrait is believed to have been painted from life by John Taylor, Shakespeare's intimate friend and was owned by his godson, William Davent, before finding its way into the hands of the Duke of Chandos. Revealed to the public in 2009, the portrait descended into the Cobb family along with the portrait of Shakespeare's patron, Henry Reevesley, the person most likely to have commissioned a painting of him. I fear the game is up for these theories, but what do you think? Are these allegations madness or is there a method to them? Let us know in the comments below and as always like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks very much and see you next time.